Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble. I am excited to be here with Laura Jones from Little Underground Management. This is a management company that manages producers and engineers and mixers. It's a really cool niche. And I know that it will provide some really great information for you artists from kind of seeing the other perspective as she manages the people that are helping you with your projects. So we're going to be talking about how musicians should be in charge in the boardroom and how you can negotiate and collaborate and all that great stuff. But before we get into that, I would love to know, Laura, like, what is your backstory? How did you end up doing what you do today? How did you get involved in music and then get involved um, with managing producers and engineers? Yeah. Well, hi, Brie. Thank you for having me on. It's lovely to be talking to you. I guess I guess I started really just as a an obsessive teenager. I sort of fell in love with, uh, I'm from England, grew up in the sort of Britpop era, you know, and just sort of became completely obsessed with music and bands and rock and roll. And um, yeah, spent most of my childhood going to shows and festivals and buying records and taping radio shows and listening to the next cool thing that was coming out. And then... Okay, not to date you, but what were kind of your favorite bands i mean i was sort of a teenager during the uh blur oasis rivalry in Britpop. pop i was oh, i was it. always on the blur side yeah but then i love so i yeah very much love blur and uh, the verb and those sort of british bands coming out at that time but equally i loved sort of american alternative rock so you know then then came the strokes and the white stripes and i kind of yeah followed into music that way um, yeah so out, out of my my obsession I just sort of always knew I wanted to do something in music it was not musical at all myself tried guitar lessons tried to play the piano tried to sing usually people would turn the microphone off <laughs> So I kind of knew that wasn't my route into this world. And um, someone told me about, you know, these courses that existed to learn the business side of the music industry where you could go and study um, arts, music and theatre management. So I decided that's what I wanted to do. And I ended up going to Paul McCartney's university in Liverpool called Lipper, the Liverpool Institute of Performing Art. Um, and I studied business there. Yeah. And during that time, it was very informative, learned a lot. It was very practical, hands-on, lots of work experience at record labels and doing A&R for different festivals. And I started to put on my own show in in Liverpool. And one night this guy came to play. His name was Eugene McGuinness. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. And um, after the show, we, we we sipped a few tequilas together and I rather drunkenly said, do you want a manager? I was like, yeah, yeah, you're going to be my manager. And I said, yeah, why not? And I think neither of us had any idea what that meant or, you know, I definitely didn't know what it meant to be a manager and I'm not sure he knew what it meant to be an artist. But we graduated and moved to London and and as we moved, he signed to Domino Records and that's sort of where the the real life proper music industry kicked in. And um, I had to learn very quickly from there. Wow. So you started out managing artists. And how did you find that experience? Um, well, a lot of the gray hairs you see today are from that era. <laughs> <laughs> they came very early in life. <laughs> it was, you know, it was such a fantastic time. I was so young. I kind of got into managing a few different artists when we moved to London, kind of small to medium size sort of indie artists. And, you know, it was fantastic. It was my dream. It was exciting. We traveled the world with them, playing shows and festivals, dealing with, you know, these record labels that I'd grew up adoring, like like Domino. Yeah, and it, and it was thrilling 
But also I was on my own. I didn't have a management company. I didn't have any support. I was just learning as I went. And, you know, artist management is incredibly full on. You know, it's not just managing the artist. It's managing the label and the publisher and the PR person, the design team and, you know, the video choreographer. You know, there's there's, there's just so, so many people to take care of and their expectations to look after. You know, obviously with the artist at the centre and really what they want, it, it, it is a lot. And it was a lot at a young age, especially with no experience. So, yeah, a, a great experience, but ultimately, you know, led me to understand that it didn't really, it wasn't really what I wanted to do. Mm. So what did you, what did you love about it? And what did you not love about it that made you decide to go a different direction? And, and where did you go from there? Yeah, I mean, I, I loved this. I loved the thrill of it. I loved being on the front line with the artists. And I loved, you know, seeing them grow and the success and being stood at the side of the stage or they're playing you know Fuji rock or you know seeing all this hard work that we'd put in come come to fruition and seeing the album come out and hearing the songs on the radio and and you know being a part of that and you know it's it's such an honor and, a, and a, a privilege and and so exciting but for me it was just also a lot of pressure you know also probably self-imposed pressure if you know are, are you good enough are you doing a good enough job feeling like this person's career is in your hands and you know so responsible you know yeah I think it's just such a big responsibility and especially then at a young age when I didn't have a lot of experience I suppose there were times when it just felt like it like like too much so yeah so I guess just during that time I met a woman and she managed record producers and she was looking for some day-to-day help so she sort of said to me oh well, why don't you come and work for me and you can help with my day-to-day management and learn a little bit about the producer world you know and maybe I can help you out with the artist or I'll give you some sort of stability and structure that that can help you in kind of your business and what you're trying to do so I said okay that sounds like that sounds like a good plan and then actually you know and, and at, at that time I had no idea idea you really too much about producers and I definitely didn't know that they had managers and I didn't know what that <laughs> what that job looked like but yeah over over the years learning more and more about that side of things I really fell in love with that craft and with that side of things and realized it was a little bit more in line with my personality with the you know with how I wanted my life to be in terms of pace and you know balance I suppose yeah you're probably not having to be at the shows every single you know all that stuff traveling you know that kind of thing as much yeah yeah it's a little your day-to-day is definitely very different a little bit more manageable well you're really lucky that you you stumbled upon a mentor to help you Mm. you know kind of get into that that segment of the market because most people like you said wouldn't even know that that segment of the market existed no Sandy Sandy was amazing and she um she taught me everything I know yeah and it was just so you know it's so interesting to learn about this world and I think you know as I mentioned my passion had always like as a kid finding new artists and bands and making these connections and and then seeing how that could come into play within the context of a producer not mm. just as an A&R or a record label but suddenly this idea that I could play with that but in the role of, of a producer manager was really exciting. Yeah, definitely. So I'm curious, you know, having been an artist manager and then now being on this side of it, do you think that every artist needs a manager or do you think that artists can develop the skills to do a lot of what managers do? I think both. I think there's a point to which you can you know, probably build your own momentum. I think it's critical that you do understand all the different facets that, that go into managing that you do have a good yeah, comprehension so that when you do have a manager, you you know, you really already have that insight and knowledge and, you know, that then you're also in control of your business because you do have that depth of, of knowledge and understanding. Um, yeah, I totally agree with that. Is the, do you feel like there is probably when it, when it, it just all feels like too much when, or you feel perhaps out of your depth, like this, this is, these are things that, that, that feel scary to decide this on my own without advice, without, you know, fully knowing what this means. 
you know, you can research on your own, you can build momentum on your own, you can get yourself so far. And then I think, you know, it's like anything in life, isn't it? You, you go so far on your own. And then there's a point at which it's nice to have a team to have people around you who can guide you and give you that that other perspective based on their experience and their wisdom. Yeah, it does really help to have people that have been through it and have that other side perspective that you might not have as an artist. So I think definitely that is a something that a manager can really help with. I know you talk about, you know, mus musicians should run the boardroom. What what does that mean to you? And what kind of skills do they need to have to do that? I just, I think, I think there's so much in this industry when things get taken out of the artist's hands and and people you know it's great to build this team but then suddenly this team are making decisions and talking about you and your art and your craft in these boardrooms perhaps without you even there and without even your <laughs> perspective and I think yeah I, and I think that's what's scary and I think that's you know to the point that we're just saying for an artist to I think it's so important for them to really understand what does go into managing like what you know what does this contract mean what does this really look like and and to to keep control and to accept the advice to listen and to know why you hired these people and to be able to trust but also to really know what's going on within your business and your career. Yeah, I know you're really big on relationship building and obviously you have to have a good relationship with your manager. I mean, they've got to have a good relationship with the people that you guys are working with. But um, do you feel like the artist should also develop relationships with everybody that they're working with? Or do you think that it's, you know, they should just kind of do their art and then the manager should develop all those relationships? Um, no, I, th I think it should always be both. I mean, if some if someone's, you know, if, if someone's rep out there in the world representing you and speaking on your behalf in, in whatever capacity I think you want to know you know who they are and what they stand for and what you know how they're going to speak about you and the way they carry themselves so no I, I think you know I, and I appreciate at the top level those teams are sometimes so large and sprawling you can't know everybody but I think you know you need to at least have relationships with the heads of those departments and you need to you know it's, just, it's transparency isn't it it's, it's just it's knowing it's knowing your own business it's and it's knowing the people that are speaking on your behalf. Yeah, I know sometimes there's this adversarial relationship between the artist and the label, you know, and how, you know, do you feel like that should be a partnership? How can you develop more of like a partnership feeling with your label, with your publisher, with your, you know, A&R team? So it's like you're doing this together instead of like you want one thing and they want one thing and you have to compromise. Yeah, well, I think that's it. Know them, spend time with them, talk to them, share music, share ideas, you know, be your authentic self and get to know them as their authentic selves so you can kind of meet and understand each other yeah I, do, I just think the more it's it's definitely a challenge because there it is business and I think there's always that line of it is business so you can't just purely be friends and there for the the fun times and the laughs but I think it's really important to yeah know, know these people be yourself around them and, and and make sure yeah that they they know you and really what you're about and then that's also going to help them as they as they build your career and know really what you want and you know what yeah how, how who you want to be how you want to grow and what your purpose is and they can help you achieve that the more they know you yeah definitely so let's talk about it from the producer side since that's who you work directly with now you know how can you how do you um, empower producers or even people that produce their own music to like advocate from the, for themselves on the on recording projects? Because, you know, they're working with artists, they're working with labels, you know, all these people, all these fingers in the pie or whatever, you know, and how, how do you make sure that you're advocating for yourself as a producer? Yeah, again, I think it goes back to like, to initially understanding what is your purpose? What, what, where are you trying to go? What 
what who do you want to be as a producer you know are we do you just do you want to be a, a top 10 hit writer is that is that your mission or is your mission you know just to to work you know on the most exciting new alternative music or you know what where are you going what 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 are we doing and then I think that and that helps you advocate and make decisions on its own. So if it's, you know, so then if a if a project comes in and it's, I don't know, it's a five-piece guitar band, they've got no money, they want to work with you. Well, if, you're, if your mission is to be a, you know, top 10 songwriter, you're probably going to say, okay, well, I don't think that's quite in line with what, what I want to do. So maybe I sh- let's not take that work because it's not in line with where I'm going. But if you're, you know, if you're the producer, whose mission is to make the best new alternative music and you love this band and maybe they've got some momentum and some interest and you really think you can help them then you know then maybe this is something that you're saying yes to so I think yeah for me advocating for yourself is about having integrity and and staying true to what you want to do and and where you want to go and not sort of forcing you know square pegs in round holes I suppose yeah I think that's good because I was going to ask about you know art versus business like balancing that but that makes sense like do you you have to balance like your business needs with your artistic desires like you said if you love alternative music you may be willing to take this project you know if they can only pay you in installments or whatever because you really want to work with these people you think they're you know making amazing music um you know versus like looking at it going well this isn't the best business decision because I could be getting paid more or whatever you know so that's always a balancing act right yeah exactly yeah I mean obviously everybody needs to pay the bills and put food on the table so you know you can't do every project because you love it and you believe in it you know there's the there's the points where you also have to say okay well we need to bring some money in this week so maybe it's it's time to take the other job that's not totally perfect but yeah I think all the time it's So long as you're mindful of what you're curating and who you're working with and the discography that you're building. And, you know, if you're always coming back to that and you're kind of you're working on that, I think that's good. That's my philosophy. Mm, Yeah, you mentioned the discography and that kind of brings up another currency in this world which is kind of metrics and the algorithm and all of that stuff how much do producers need to think about that when they're picking projects um you know do do producers often have to like help the artists kind of you know build those numbers and and stuff like that i mean <laughs> they they're not really helping them build the numbers but i do know of people in the studio who are you know, we'll break down songs that are having viral hits and be looking at the structure and trying to replicate that or replicate certain parts or, or, you know, like creating songs specifically with the view of trying to create a viral hit, like looking at all the ones before and seeing exactly how they break down and trying to replicate based on that. That's not something... And I mean, do you encourage producers to try to do that or does it just depends on their goals? Exactly. I think my my roster is definitely not doing that. Um, I think our kind of taste and mission is is different, but that's, again, you know, it's, it's everyone is different and everyone wants yeah to achieve different things um so no I think amongst the people that I work with that's not something we're ever really like keeping in mind or focusing on I think always you know maybe it's old school but still at the at the heart of what we do is just that you know creativity and trying to make music that's in line with the vision that artists has and who they want to be and not trying to force something because they think oh if we slip this line in or this cut then maybe it'll be more popular on TikTok I think you know if that that happens after then wonderful how great for everybody but it's never something that we're going into the studio thinking about or forcing but like I said that's good that can be very tempting though right (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) so when you are um, working with a new producer um, and you're you know thinking of signing them or you've just signed them and you're how do you know when they're ready to like do a a big project or like a more high profile project a good question I think usually the point at which I would start working with someone is probably that point 
when they're ready to take on a bigger a bigger challenge perhaps so I would usually only get involved when there is some momentum when you know they've kind of accrued some credits of people that are building a profile that are getting some attention and then you know that's usually when I'd be able to come in and say oh okay well I can see you know your taste and what you've built so far and I think I actually have the right contacts to be able to connect more dots for you and create the next stepping stones so I think yeah I think for me it's kind of like an organic an organic process yeah and it makes sense just like with artists you know, artists have to go out there and build their social media up and build their Spotify numbers and build their show numbers and all that before record labels or managers are going to take notice. That's just the world we live in. And I'm sure that's true about producers too, because there is that ability to do much, so much production on your own without a manager, you know, just with connecting with other artists and, and getting a lot of projects under your belt so mm -hmm. it's you know just like artists you have to kind of build up your portfolio before you look for a manager yeah exactly awesome well i this has been really interesting to to talk about it from like the artist perspective and then also the producer perspective so if anyone is uh listening or watching and wants to get more information on your agency or maybe they want to you know work with one of your producers how do they reach out to you online um it is my website is littleundergroundmanagement.com and we're on instagram as well which i for totally forget my handle that's how how I feel about social media. <laughs> um, <laughs> I told you how old school I am. Um, I think it little underscore underground MGMT, but maybe I'll confirm and you can put it in the notes. Yeah, we'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> but go to their website. <laughs> Obviously, you get everything that you need on their website. So that's all you guys need. So thank you so much, Laura, for this insight into a part of the industry that we don't often hear about. Oh, it was lovely talking to you, Bree. Thanks so much for having me on. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at RondiFay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.